Welcome to Labrakazam, where we make science make sense. So you're saying there's no sound in space at all? There's like not a single alien dance party going on out there? None that I've been invited to, but today we're going to test that theory. How? Are we sending Bart into space? Oh, sure. Send the robot. Don't worry. Nobody has to leave the planet. To understand if there's sound in space, we have to learn about the properties of waves. Waves are regular patterns of motion that transfer energy from place to place without transferring matter, like this. As you can see, the people only move up and down. They don't actually travel from the beginning of the wave to the end of it. Here, let's break it down. This is a wave tank. Hit it. Looks like the waves are just moving from one side of the tank to the other. Interesting observation, Izzy. What do you guys think would happen if I take this ball and put it into the wave tank? I think that it'll move with the wave from one side of the tank to the other. I think it'll just bob up and down. Let's find out. It's moving up and down, but not in the direction that the wave is moving. Exactly. Matter doesn't move through waves, only energy does. We can understand more about waves by adjusting the settings on our wave generator. It looks like the adjustment is making the waves get closer together. Right. The distance between wave peaks is called wavelength. The shorter the wavelength, the more energy a wave has. What if I change the knob labeled amplitude? What do you notice? That adjustment made the wave smaller. Right. Amplitude is how tall or short a wave is. Can you measure amplitude and wavelength? Yep. Scientists do it all the time. The amplitude is the distance from the wave's peak to its resting point, which is the level of calm water. The wavelength is the distance from peak to peak. Is this the same amplitude and wavelength that they use for music? It is, which brings us to our next topic, sound waves. Sound waves are caused by vibrations, and they travel through the air, but they're a little different than water waves. Let's demonstrate with this extremely scientific tool. Cool, I love these things. Zoe, you can take one end, and Izzy, you can take the other end. Perfect. Zoe, start making waves. Oh, I knew what she meant. Great. The wave is going up and down. You can see it more clearly because of this red piece of tape I added to it. When a wave moves up and down, we call it a transverse wave. But sound waves travel a little differently. Zoe, give it a try. Instead of moving up and down, the waves are moving forward and backwards. That's exactly right, Izzy. This is called a longitudinal wave, and it's the way that sound waves travel through the air. Air is made up of particles, and these particles are important to how sound waves travel. When a speaker vibrates, it causes air particles to vibrate in the form of a longitudinal wave, and that travels in all directions. Wait, is that why you can hear sound even when you're not directly in front of a speaker? Yes, sound waves do not travel like a beam of light. They go in all directions. All the sound we can hear, from my voice, to noises, to music, travels through sound waves. So sound can only travel through air and on top of water? Actually, sound waves can travel through lots of different things. Let's check it out with some real world science. We just learned about waves on the surface of water. But did you know that dolphins make sounds that travel as underwater waves for navigation? It's called echolocation. Earthquakes travel as waves too. They travel through the ground and can be so powerful they break buildings. And rock stars use sound waves to make music. 
My guitar is hooked up to an amplifier. This knob controls the amplitude. Remember, that's how tall waves are. Amplitude is all about energy. When I turn it up, adding more energy, the sound gets louder. The results, the waves get taller, higher amplitude. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> now that we've learned about sound waves, let's do a demonstration that will allow us to better understand them. Hey, Bert, can I see your speaker, please? What for? It's for science. Last time you said that, I was zapped with 10,000 volts. I said I was sorry. Sorry doesn't fill the hole in my heart. Literally, there's now a huge hole in my heart. Pretty please? Fine, take it. This salt represents air particles. Let's see what happens when we turn on the speaker. Crank it up, Bert. The salt's moving around everywhere. It's vibrating. Like air particles do. Vibrating air particles are what makes sound possible. Without air particles, there would be nothing to vibrate. And there's no air in space. Which is why real space explosions don't go boom. They don't even make any sound at all in space. Labrakazam! Let's test out that theory. We just need a music player. I found some music. That's much better. I'm going to take this phone that's playing music and put it inside this vacuum chamber. When we turn it on, it's going to suck out all of the air particles. What do you think will happen to the music? Without the air, we can't hear the music. I still think we'll be able to hear it. I mean, we're not in space right now. Let's find out. Izzy, hit that button and it'll suck out the air. I can't hear it anymore. The pump removed all the air, so the sound waves have nothing to travel through. How do we know it's still on? Well, we can open the valve and let the air back in. There it is. Jeffrey, did you take my phone to demonstrate sound waves again? Mom, I'll give it back. Don't raise your amplitude at me, young man. I hate being wrong, but I must admit it. Waves are pretty cool. Glad you finally came around, Izzy. To show you how you can learn more about waves at home, let's kick it over to Zoe. Today, to help us understand wave properties, I'm going to show you how to make your own wave model out of candy. To make a wave model out of candy, you'll need some barbecue skewers, gummy candy, duct tape, and a glass of water. You'll also need something to anchor the duct tape to. You can use anything that's sturdy, but I'm going to use this table and that bookshelf. The sticky side of the duct tape should be up. Run the duct tape between your two anchors. Once you have your duct tape, you're going to prepare your skewers. You're going to put a gummy candy on either end, but first, dip it into a cup of water to make the gummy candy go on easier. These are kind of sharp, so be really careful not to poke yourself. Always be sure to have a few extra gummy candies for quality control. Next, find the balance point on your skewer by balancing it on your finger. Once you have it, take it by the balance point and stick it to the middle of the duct tape. Place your skewers evenly apart along the duct tape. Now it's time to add a second piece of duct tape on top. Make sure you get nice contact all along the skewers. There's your wave. Based on what you know, how could you change your wave properties, amplitude, and wavelength? Could you use energy to increase amplitude? What about wavelength? Try it yourself. Now, let's review. Today, we learned that waves are one way energy is moved from place to place. 
Amplitude is the height of the wave, and wavelength is the distance between the wave peaks. And the sound we hear is a type of wave that travels through the air. Ah, 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 coming at you, Bert! Wow! Space is so big! Am I a ship or the asteroid? Toast! Ah, what? Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm Dr. Jeff for Labrakazam. I'm